Well hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be covering the third and final part of my uh, videos um, which relates to the front lenses on the Mark I GTO and 3000 GT. Um, I'm going to cover this in multiple stages and I'm going to assume that you um, have never sprayed yourself before. If you have sprayed your before you'll probably know everything I'm going to show you um, and you may even know something that I don't know but these are just things that I've learned over the years um, and by taking apart the original lenses to get, get the information we need. So as you know the original lenses came in this lovely dark grey which seems to contrast well with every single model that Mitsubishi made. But now the lenses are available in a clear lens um, a number of you have bought these so you can custom spray them to the colours that you desire. So today we're going to be uh, working on techniques. Um, they're going to be covering how to spray if you've never sprayed before, how to mask off the area, how to get the best results and how to make sure the job that you do is going to last a long while and look professional. So first of all we're going to start looking at the parts you're going to need in order to do the job. Okay, so let's look at the products you're going to need in order to complete this job to a professional standard. First of all, of course, is the paint. You can't just use any old paint from down the shop. Um, that depends on where you live and what your local shop is. But the main thing to know is you need to use an acrylic 2K, or in some countries it's known as 2-pack um, paint. Now, this is the air-dried version. Um, in most countries now they've banned the isocyanate hardener um, and you can buy it in uh, a can from your local uh, spray shop or paint shop um, and they'll mix it to your own colour but it must be the acrylic 2k paint. Secondly it's worth noting that uh, paint doesn't like certain things. It won't like water, oil, silicon or plastic. And of course we're spraying onto plastic. If you spray directly onto plastic, chances are the paint will just scrape off or peel off in a few days. So we're going to need a special adhesion promoter. Now these are two that I buy locally. I'm not endorsing any of these products or being paid to endorse any of these products. These are just the ones that I buy from my local spray shop. Um, it's quite a common product now anyone who supplies paint will almost certainly supply a paint primer and what this stuff does when you spray it on is it eats very slightly into the top surface of the plastic to give you a new surface to spray onto and for the paint to stick to. The next thing you're going to need is some form of um, oil remover, a degreaser. Now I use isopropanol alcohol, it's very very cheap and easily um, got from the local store and it's perfect for removing grease. But you might want to use a professional degreaser or whatever you can get your hands on that will remove any oils. The reason you need this is a couple of things. First of all, when they make these in the machine, any machine has oils around it and sometimes there's spots of oil that gets into the molding process. When you go to spray onto them you'll find that uh, you get little tiny oil spots coming through the paint. So we're going to remove any traces of oil uh, from your fingers as well that are going to prevent the paint sticking. You're also going to need a soft cloth in order to put the uh, degreaser on and to wipe the surfaces of any muck. And finally, you're going to need some masking tape. Now, don't be fooled into believing all masking tape is the same. This is the stuff that you get from your local hardware store, normally a couple of dollars, a couple of pounds a roll. Um, and it's perfect for doing part of the process that we're going to do. It's great for your household paint, which is much thicker, and it's fine for spray shop um, use where you're not going to need extreme detail. Um, so you're going to need some of that to cover large areas. You're also going to need some 3M masking tape. Now please don't try to cut corners. Go into any spray shop anywhere in the world and every single professional sprayer will tell you you cannot rush the job and you cannot cut corners if you want a professional job. Now if we use this for masking around corners what's going to happen is the edges will lift ever so slightly and paint will run underneath it and it will totally ruin your lenses. 
believe me I've tried so instead um, if you're near to a Walmart you can pick this up from Walmart uh, this particular one is called advanced edge locker um, it's from scotch 3m it's the best i've ever tried and it gives a hundred percent sealing from any paint running if you're in the uk and some other countries um, you can still get 3m tape um, but i had to get this online i couldn't find a local store that sold it and finally uh, the only other thing you're going to need is a chair to sit on now this might seem a bit bizarre, but in order to do this job, you're gonna need at least four hands. I don't have four, and unless you're lucky enough to have four, you're gonna have to use your legs to hold the product while you put it together. Okay, so now we're gonna look at spraying techniques. Some of you may have used spray cans before or even work in a spray shop, so these tips are not really for you. And before anyone starts writing to me, I'm aware that this is not a professional demonstration. It's not supposed to be. There are many people out there that have never picked up a spray can in their life, but still want to try this job themselves. So I'm going to go through some very simple basic spraying tips to get you through the job. First thing to notice is on the side of any can that you buy, it's going to give you a few pointers. One of them is that you should always wear a spraying mask and preferably spray in fresh air. Secondly, it's going to tell you what temperature to spray at. Now here in England right now, we're in the winter and it's a little bit cold and a little bit damp, but I've worked out that we're just on the threshold of being able to do this demonstration outside. Um, it's also going to tell you about pressures, drying times and all sorts of other things. And very importantly, how long to shake the can for. Now, of course, anyone who sprays for the first time thinks, oh, a quick spray and we're all done, let's start spraying. But it doesn't work that way because the paint inside the can, when left sitting, separates a bit like oil and water. So you'll end up with a thick, dark color at the bottom and then other colors that are mixed into it to give the final color, then a lacquer, then an air. All these parts have to be mixed exactly to get the color that you need. So if it says shake it for two minutes vigorously, shake it for two minutes vigorously and you'll get the results you're looking for. The next thing is to note is the nozzle. These nozzles on this particular can can be turned to any angle and you will turn that to give you the desired spraying pattern. In the old days, all paint come out at a standard round um, image but uh, now we can get an almost professional finish by adjusting the nozzle. Now let's look at how to spray. Now, if you're in a spray shop and you're using a hand spray gun, you can adjust the air pressure to get the paint to come out at the rate that you want it to spray. But with a can, you can't do that. It only comes out at one constant pressure. So in order to get the effect we need, you have to move your hand at the speed to lay just the right amount of paint down. So I'll give you a quick demonstration. If we sit about eight to 10 inches away from our spraying surface and move in a very quick motion. Now that spray finisher I just did shows it with the nozzle round the right, wrong way. If I give you another demonstration with a nozzle turned 90 degrees, at exactly the same spray time, you'll see the difference. And you see now we've got a nice wide um, paint spray and the two are slightly different. So what I'm going to be looking for is somewhere in between so we get a good coverage. I know my fingers are getting too cold. A good coverage um, in the area that we want it. Next thing to know about the speed is if you go too slow you're going to put too much paint into one area and what happens if you do that is you get the paint running you don't want to do that and the final thing worth noting is if you're too far away and you spray you end up with most of your paint wasted because you're going to only be painting in a very small area on the lens so before starting to spray, it's worth practicing yourself to get the right speed and the right distance for what you're going to be spraying. 
for me I prefer around about six to eight inches um, and this gives me the coverage I need for what we're going to do. That's pretty much what you're going to be looking for on your first spray coat. We're going to be giving it a total of two spray coats. If you try to put on too much in one go, the paint will run. So we do it in two spray coats. It also helps to bond better if you do it in two coats. So now let's move on to the masking of the uh, lens ready for spraying. Okay, so here's where the chair comes in. If you find yourself a nice comfy chair with no arms, I can now demonstrate to you where we're going to be masking off on this lens. So if you come a bit closer, you'll see on the original lens, they used a line here, which follows round and meets up with another line on the other side. And that's the first area you're going to be masking. Now, if I show you on a clear one, you can see better the line that we're looking for. So it's this line here between the ribbed part of the light and the clear part of the light. And if we turn it round, you can see a clear ridge here. So that's your masking line along there. Now when it comes to the end, there is no marking. So what you're going to do is join up the two parts across there, and that will give you where you need to be. On this end, it goes pretty much all the way around, so you can't get it wrong. So when it comes to masking, we're going to start off with a two inch standard household masking tape. Now masking off sounds like a simple process and perhaps if you're going through uh, around a door of a house or a window, it is a fairly simple process, but we're working with something quite small and detailed and accuracy is going to be very, very important if you want to replicate the original factory finish. So if we start off with a two inch tape, and we're going to go about uh, two inches either side of the lens and then tear it off. It is possible to do this in one go. However, I found it much easier if you do it in two goes. So given the line that we've marked on the end here, you start off about two thirds up the line and follow it down to the corner here. Press that down and now you pull the tape around the corner. Now, for those of you that haven't used masking tape before, it's a little bit like crepe paper. You can easily manipulate it to do different corners and angles. So now I've pulled it round the corner. We can press that down a little bit just to hold it in place, ready for our next movement. Now, everyone has their own technique to this, but I always see it as your left hand, if you're right handed, being the holding and laying down hand and the right hand is the guiding hand. So as you see, I guide the tape with this hand and I use this hand to hold the tape in place while I make the next movement. And this is why you needed a chair because you're gonna need your lap or something to put this down onto while you're laying the tape. So if you're coming close, I hold on the corner there, I line up the next piece of tape along the line and move my thumb forward. Then I find the next piece on the line, move my hand forward. And as you get more and more skilled, you'll find that you can lay as you go by moving it around the corner. All the way around. Get it as accurately as you can to the line. And then you're going to see a really good finish. When you get to the end, you're now going to bring it round the line to join up on the other side with the line on the other side. At the end here, you can go a little bit over because the next piece of tape will cover over that um, piece there on the end. Now we go back and just make sure this is stuck down all the way round. Paint loves to get into the tiniest little nooks and crannies. Any area that isn't fully protected is going to have paint going behind it. So just make sure it's all fully down all the way around. Now we move on to the other side. Same piece of uh, type of tape, similar length. And you're now going to overlay by about an inch, a couple of centimeters, and start following around again. One hand holding, 
and laying while the other one does the steering. Work your way around. Now I did happen to notice that it looks like Mitsubishi when they originally had these done by uh, a company called Stanley they uh, actually appeared to have masked these off by hand themselves because I've taken apart quite a lot of them and noticed they all seem to be masked in slightly different areas or they're all in the same area but to different standards and obviously a few guys had a, a bit of an off day when they was masking them off but at the end of the day no one ever noticed and everyone's happy with the job so now we've done that second half we're going to seal all the way along to make sure no paint whatsoever gets inside that lens and that we're stuck all the way around nice and cleanly so there we go that's the first and the easiest part of the masking off now we move on to the other side now I found it's always easier to start on this front edge so that's what I'm going to advise you do now for this part of the demonstration you're going to need the 3M um, scotch tape as I said before I'm not being paid to endorse 3M products I've tried lots and lots of masking tapes and damaged lots and lots of lenses which you don't want to do and this is the only tape that gives me the finish that I consider to be as good as the original factory finish now you're only going to need a one inch tape here because you're going to be going around some pretty serious corners and if your tape's too wide you're going to struggle getting around the corner. Now if you feel along the line here you're going to feel a little square point. This is where the injection moulding process started and this is a good starting point for your lens. So if you go just a centimetre or two just past that, get a, a length of tape ready and what you're looking to do is right on the sharp edge there you want to go about half a millimeter to a millimeter just over that line no more than that and as I press the tape down you'll see it form a little indentation in the masking tape that's your guide and you need to keep that sort of distance all the way around I just need to pause a second because I'm going blind and I need some glasses. Now I've got some glasses we can carry on. Now this is a very slow and detailed um, job. You cannot rush it at all. As I said, masking tape will allow you to bend around the corner and what you need to do is hold firmly with your left hand while you guide the second. Push the second one into place and then move along with your left hand again little bit at a time okay just a, a very very fine overlay now once you've got a little way around the corner put this top uh, beginning part down that will give you a little bit more adhesion because you're going to be pulling on this tape as you go carry on around the edge using your leg to steady it as you go now when we get up to the corner here at this point you cannot pull around the corner because the tape will tear so you need to take off a piece of tape before you start going around the corner then gently guide it round once around the corner you're going to be doing the same as on the other side just a little under a millimeter if you can all the way round okay on the corner now just nip that together and with this hand you can follow around the corner there pressing that tape down all the way around and then we carry on around here now of course if you was doing hundreds and hundreds of these your skills would build up and you can do it pretty quickly um, or if you're a professional sprayer you'll find you can do the same but for you new guys that have never done this before just take your time there's no rush to get the job done um, if you find it won't go easily round a bend then all you need to do is go back a little bit pull it a little bit at the top edge here and then start again lay it again 
and then again and again and you keep on repeating it until you've got enough bend on there to go round the corner like so once again on the corner you cannot pull it around a corner so you pull it first then let it find its own way around the corner use your fingers to hold it and keep on following round Now when you get back to your original starting point, you want to go uh, maybe three, four centimeters, inch, inch and a half beyond your starting point, overlapping it, and then tear off. Now it's time to go back and just be 100% sure that everything is laid down in place. Corners, just nip them up like that so they don't pull too much on the corner and lay the tape down all the way around. Once it's laid down, you then really firmly work it down so there's no chance of that sliding at all. And then on the other side, do the same. Okay, now one thing I forgot to do which I should have done before putting on the blue tape, but I'm sure it'll be fine if I do it now, is use your degreaser. Um, definitely isopropanol will work better if you've already put the tape on, whereas a regular degreaser may uh, break the bond of the tape. And you just want to go in this groove here where you're going to be spraying. Follow it all the way around, give it a good thorough cleaning to remove any oils from the machinery from when it's made. Once again, don't try to cut corners with this. Once you've sprayed this, the spray paint won't come off, so there's no way of correcting the job afterwards. Okay, so all the tape stayed fine. The isopropanol will evaporate very, very quickly. Okay, so after you've made sure all your blue tape is down fine, and you've uh, cleaned uh, any oils and muck off the lens. Now turn it over and one final piece of tape just to cover up the front of the lens here. Now believe me, although you're not spraying on this side, the spray paint in the air will definitely stick to everything that isn't covered. So cover yourself by making sure it's all done correctly. And there we go, now we're ready for spraying. Okay, so now we're going to start with a spray. Now to start off with, you're going to need the special plastic primer to allow the initial uh, layer of paint to stick properly. You're going to adjust your nozzle to how you want it, and you're going to have a little bit of practice to make sure you get the right spraying technique. Some people, um, when they're fairly new to spraying, rather than try to spray one whole length in one go, like to do it in little short bursts like that. And that works quite well as long as you don't overlay too much because then it'll start to run. Um, other people just like to do the whole thing in one quick go. Um, sometimes one works for me, sometimes another works for me, especially on a cold day like today where I can hardly feel the can. Now what you're going to be doing is going down at about a 45 degree angle to the lens itself, all the way around. And that will give you coverage where you need to be along this flat edge and at a slight angle down the uh, upward face there. The upward face is less important. Even when they were sprayed at Stanley, you'll notice that the up face is more an overspray than an actual spray coat. So, just double check all your blue tape is stuck down one final time, because it will lift if you don't keep an eye on it, especially on certain days where it doesn't want to stick properly. And here we go, along one edge first, I'm gonna do a quick uh, fuel spray so I know where it's gonna come out. Okay, so here we go, along there. Just a very quick coat, not too thick, and that's it done. 
Now this stuff dries pretty quick, especially on a hot day, you can dry this in five minutes. I'm going to give it 10 or 15 minutes just to uh, dry properly because it's a cold day and I need a little bit of extra time. Okay, so I've left it 15 minutes. I can feel that the uh, initial primer is now fully dry. So we're going to move on to the first color coat. Now for this particular one, I've decided to use R38, um, which is the original uh, Monza Red, which my car was sprayed in. Um, and a few people have asked me for red lenses. So here's a set ready for them. I've given the can a good two minute shake. So hopefully I'm going to get the paint spray that I need. Now when we start on this spray uh, coat, the initial coat, we're going to be looking for coverage similar to this one here. So if you uh, get a feel for your cam first, find out how fast you've got to go, how far away you've got to go to get what you need. And even though I've shaken that for two minutes, you can still see it still come out a bit blotchy. So we'll give it a bit more of a shake. It's an old can. Okay, it's starting to break up a bit now. Okay, I'm going to go with that. So, same as with the primer coat, um, we're going to give it a nice even finish if we can. Okay, now you see I missed the front of the lens there a bit, or the back of the lens, I should say. So that's going to allow me now to do a second pass and get a better coating okay now we turn it around and do the same on the other side now you can see i'm now using the technique of short sprays because it allows me to maneuver on each spray just to get into where i need to be now that's all the coverage you need you can see you can still see through the lens it's not 100 percent coverage but that's good enough for your first coat it's a problem with spraying, and I know when I first started spraying, you always try to think, oh, I can just get a bit more on, a bit more on, and try to do the whole job in one coat. Please take my advice. Do not try to do it in one coat. I can assure you the paint will run, and you won't get the finish that you're looking for. So now we've got that first coat on there, we're going to put this one in a warm room and leave this for another 15, 20 minutes. That's all it's going to take for that first coat to be dry enough, ready for the final coat. So now we're ready for the final coat. Um, it doesn't matter if you get a perfect finish on this coat. If you need to do it again, put on a third coat. It's much better to put layer upon layer upon layer of thin coats than try to do it in a rush. So it's been left to dry for another 15, 20 minutes, which is enough that the surface is um, dry to the touch um, and not gonna take any paint off. But it's still soft enough for the next layer of paint to bond to it properly. Um, for this final coat, I always do short bursts because that way it's much more controllable to make sure in areas where it's not had coverage properly on the first coat, you can get in there a bit better. Okay, now I'm going to leave that. I can tell you that this particular colour of red does not give very good uh, coverage in one or two coats. It's a rather watery colour and it takes more coats in order to build it up and stop the light shining through too much. So again, I'm going to leave this 15, 20 minutes to dry some more and then we'll put on another coat. So now I'm going to do a third and a final coat on this uh, particular lens. As I said, the Monza Red is a little bit of a wishy-washy paint, although it looks fantastic on the cars. It needs a lot of build-up to get the, the results that you need. The beauty of that is, of course, your paint looks really deep and rich, as though it's got a lacquer coat on top. Um, my car was originally sprayed with the 2K paint that doesn't have a lacquer coat over the top. Um, and it's a much, much nicer finish in my opinion. So here we go, once again, same process as before.
and I think that will be sufficient this time. Now at this point, because we're fairly cold here in England at the moment, I'm going to take this indoors and put it on a radiator to allow it to dry properly. Okay, so the lens has been left on a radiator now for a couple of hours and the paint is pretty dry, certainly very dry to the touch. So at this point we can remove the masking tape. Now it's easiest if you can find the ends where you originally stuck it, but if you can't just tear your way in. And always try to pull away from the thing that you're stuck to. That's one, and then on the next one, with the blue tape again, try to find the end and peel away from the lens as you go. And there you go, finished item. I'm not a big fan of the red myself, the grey I think that uh, they was originally sprayed with looks uh, brilliant, but uh, you know everyone's got their own personal choice. Now I'd recommend that you leave this in a warm room for at least 24 hours to make sure the paint is fully hardened before you start assembly of the lens. So to finish off I hope you've enjoyed this video um, I hope you're subscribed to my video channel and uh, in future I'm doing lots more different videos. Some of them will be listed at the end of this one. If there's anything particular you would like me to cover in a video, any form of how to do, um, I'm happy to do for you. But bear in mind it is winter here in England at the moment. So if we're talking about engine removal, I'm not going to be doing that this time of year. But anything else that's not on the list at the end, just let me a know and I'll try and do my best to cover it for you. Thanks for watching.